Making an Impact podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Impact Wrestling. Zach, we have to start off on a bit of a downer. Uh, came out way early this morning that Road Warrior Animal has passed away. Damn. Yeah. I, I take it that's the first you've heard of it? That is the first I've heard of it. You, you need to go on the internet more often, my friend. Uh, no real information about how or why has been revealed. Uh-huh. All we know is... How, how old was he? Uh, 60. Oh, okay. Uh, the Road Warrior Twitter account was the one who tweeted it out. I think it was um, his son who posted it. So it's it's just one of those things where, unfortunately, you know, another legend gone too soon. Um, I don't want to speculate, you know, with the with the pandemic going on, you know, that could have been a problem. You know, I, I hadn't heard anything about him having any significant health issues, but I have to also have to imagine that being 60 and living through the decades he lived in with with the drug use and the steroids and the eating red meat for every meal that maybe his lifestyle caught up to him. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, it sucks yeah. for his son. It really does. Uh, James Laurinaitis, former Los Angeles Ram, when, he, when they were St. Louis, he was a St. Louis Ram. And uh, former Ohio State Buckeye. Uh, I can't imagine that he's doing too well with it. Uh, Animal did have a few stints in Impact. He showed up for the Broken Universe Battle Royale, whatever the hell that was called, when, uh, when the uh, Rock and Roll Express, I think, showed up and Matt and... Ricky Morton fought on cranes. <laughs> Animal had a little, yeah. yeah. Animal had a little cameo there. Uh, he popped up again with um, 2007 with Rick Steiner at Slammiversary oh. 07. Uh, he had been kind of loosely affiliated with Jack Stain and Crimson when they were doing their tag team for a little while, and then of course uh, in, uh, in 2003, Animal popped up in 2000 uh, in the old. Impact, no, the TNA Asylum, that's what it was called, not the Impact. Yeah. Uh, down in Nashville, they showed up and uh, had two or three appearances, and it felt like it was the start of something, and then they weren't around for a little while, and then Hawk passed away. So, you know, not the deepest history with Impact, but still a prominent one, and was one of the few guys who popped in early and got things going in terms of name value. You know, you had Ken Shamrock and Jeff Jarrett to start, but essentially it ended up becoming uh, more geared towards the younger guys. So when the road orders popped up to help, I think it was AMW, that was a big seal of approval. And on the TNA, I think it was year one DVD, or it may have been the um, Greatest Moments DVD. Uh, Chris Harris talked about how special that moment was and how it felt like it was the passing of the proverbial torch to them and like their seal of approval towards them. So, you know, even in the twilight of their careers, they still carried so much reverence and respect. And Swisher even pointed out on Twitter that he and I used to have debates about who was better, the Steiners or the Road Warriors, but it was always just the Steiners or the Road Warriors. There was never any other team because of how good they were independently. So, uh-huh. you know, Godspeed enjoy you know the afterlife you know uh, you know good good vibrations and whatnot to the family and you know just just you know i hope everything for them you know turns out well and i I hope his family uh, can remember the good times because you know these are never easy things to deal with Uh, uh, he's he's, hanging out with hawk again yeah yeah he is oh what a rush yeah you got any uh road warrior memories that, that that really stood out to you um, not, not really. I never saw the Road Warriors when I was younger. Um, the, the most I saw, I mean, obviously like I have some like DVD collections of old school WCW NWA stuff. So, you know, the scaffold match they had with the, um, is it the Rock and Roll Express or was that the Midnight Express? There's too many damn expresses. Yeah. They need to simplify that crap. They do. <laughs> well, I mean, they were 
they were like the big tag team, at least in the NWA for the majority of the eighties. So then they were, they were pretty legit. They were pretty legit. They were too legit. They were too legit to quit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was awful. So let's, uh, let's move on and talk about impact from last night. It was a wild affair. Uh, that gave us something that I think is going to end up uh, truly, truly, truly upsetting me in the long run. Yeah. But uh, they're going to do it and tease me, and I don't know how I feel about that. So we open up with a triple threat, a really good triple threat, with Chris Bay, Trey Miguel, and TJP for the right to face the X-Vision champion. We all thought that this would actually be, like, a thing. Mm-hmm. When see in a few weeks, maybe at Victory Road, maybe it sets up, you know, whatever. Well, Trey wins after I think TJP had Bay in a submission hold. And yep. then uh, Trey hit him with a double knee from the top rope and pinned TJP after making contact. And then right after that, all of a sudden, Rohit runs in like it's money in the bank and he's like, I want to fight. I want to fight. The ref's like, sure. That seems like something that we do regularly. I'll make the match now because I have that autonomy. That was dumb. So the match starts. To be fair. Yes. uh, To be fair uh, to the referee, at least, not to be fair to anybody else. But when Rohi came out early on in the match and he was in his ring gear and uh, Josh and Master were like, and he's out here for the match, for his championship match, and immediately following this one, I was like, oh. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. I yeah, don't always they, listen yeah. to commentary because Josh is awful. Yeah, and that's fair, but it's <laughs> but even even still, why? Just why? Basically. So after that, Rohit runs in, rolls up Trey, gets the tights, and he wins. So it was kind of a waste of a whole scenario. Usually when these things happen, though, um, the the underdog, you know, been out there for four to five minutes, been beaten up, sent through 48 goddamn tables. It's just not even going to be possible for him to get out. He's got to get up. And then he wins. They didn't do it this yep. time. <laughs> nope. So and like, that's fine. <laughs> right, yeah. It's like on that end of the spectrum, I'm fine with it, truly. Truly fine with it. Um... So it is what it is. Uh, let's go on, though. We get a, an Eric Young promo. I generally don't care. Like, at all. Yeah. It was, it was long. It was long. It's, it's just... It's Eric Young. Who gives a fuck? It was long, and it still wasn't the longest of his three segments for the night. Like, who wants to see him that often? Who wants to see him at all? I find I, I, f- I find us that I find that we're in a place where we're getting something that I don't see anyone talking about. And I mean, honestly, uh, for one thing, very few, if anybody, should have three long segments in a single and definitely not Eric Young. <laughs> yeah. N- not the way to go. Uh, Gia Miller interviewed to Dashwood ahead of her match tonight. Caleb's there. He answers the door, but he closes it and says that she's busy. BRB. Yeah. Very rude to Gia. Very rude. Very rude. Everybody's just so rude to Gia. Everyone is so rude to Gia. I do not know why Kimberly is eating so many damn losses. I will say this every week because it doesn't make any sense. Susie, who they're still pushing, despite the fact she reminds me of mid-2000s Tori Wilson in the ring. Yeah. It's not great. No, it's not really even, not. Not even a little. Um, despite that, uh, Susie goes over. Um, then she starts twitching, and 
I don't know. This is, again, where I'm just kind of sitting here going, this is so hokey. At least the Susie Sue Young character makes a little bit more sense in the realm of realism than, say, Rosemary, because it's generally just seen as Susie and Sue Young having a split personality disorder. Yeah. But also, like, I, I think she's entertaining. I do. Like, on screen, I think she has a magnetism. She has the ability to really uh, um, draw eyes on her promos. You know, wh- what promos she has. Like, you know, she doesn't really do a lot of the talky talky so much as the looky looky. But uh. she still has a presence. But as far as giving her wins over someone like Kimberly, who's honestly, just in terms of pure quality, one of the best on the roster. I don't know. Like, I, I, if it was anyone other than Kimberly, I, I don't think I'd have an, an issue with Susie going over. You know, it feels like you're taking one of your better workers and sacrificing them for the sake of what? A character that's no more over than anyone else? Uh-huh. Like, it, it'd be different if Susie was, like, a huge star, like, stone cold, and you want to feed her, like, you know, top guys to make them look even better. But I, can, I honest to God, can't tell you the last time I've seen... Uh, uh, Kimberly win. I think she won two matches very early on against Havoc, and both of them were using brass knuckles, and that was it. It's just, it's just not good, man. Uh, I am I'm it, not. It's not good. I am not excited about where this is going with Susie at all. Like I said, the momentum after Slamversary for me has taken a hard left i will say this though it it has not hurt the ratings while the six seven thousand viewers that they had right after slimeversary have dissipated they're still up what 200 percent on twitch no it's eight weeks later you know they were doing like 1500 and last night i saw you know i i think peak was like 3700 so like yeah they're still maintaining their their fucking uptick which is good I'm just saying personally, I'm not enjoying some of what I'm seeing. And like, the thing is like the stuff that I'm seeing isn't stuff that I would say is too pertinent. Like the complaints I have aren't about the biggest stuff. I think the quality in the promos, the in ring work, which is solid all all around. I think that's part of the reason why fans are here. So like, if you change some of these things, I don't think you're going to have, too much of a mutiny, you know? And, like, with the Rosemary character, I, I think it's doable in a more realistic light. Uh-huh. So, like, you know, you don't even need to worry about that. Um, but, so, yeah, that's just kind of where I am on that. Uh, what about you? Anything? Um, I mean, I, I, definitely do, I definitely agree that there are... There, like, uh, like, there is good quality here. There are just some very questionable decisions and just... They're not, uh, Impact is not trying to do anything too groundbreaking or revolutionary or try and do anything that's too out there. Mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like after, and it may have just been that they're a little gun shy after the whole Tessa debacle, but I feel like they're doing a lot of playing it safe right now. Mm-hmm. So I. I would like to. I definitely would like to see more of some of what we're getting, but definitely some some things changing up a bit. What would you like to see changed, and how would you go about it? Um, one as um, this is what we've been we've been talking about this since Slammiversary. It seems like is the 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 championships as who and more importantly as to who is winning them and for whatever reason um chris bay didn't need to lose the title that quickly and i don't even know that he needed to be win it off of willie mack that quickly to be completely honest um diana again never did not need to win it until at least bound for glory if not later um Especially with what they're doing, like what they're doing with Tennille, I still don't think she's that great of a worker. But 
at least they're actually taking that it's all about me gimmick and actually using it. Whereas they brought her before and she was just stock baby face female wrestler. And now they're actually utilizing what they were trying to do in the first place. So there's that. Um, Eric Young didn't need to be Eddie for the world title and Eric Young doesn't need to be facing Rich Swan at Bound for Glory for the world title. I mean, there's still the possibility of Eddie reclaiming the title before then, but it doesn't seem very likely. No. So, and I am ima- I imagine that the the Machine Guns won the tag team titles as a uh, from the North just to get it off of the North and put it on to the Good Brothers without doing Good Brothers versus North right away. So I kind of get that, but it just depends on how long the the machine guns are going to hold the titles for is the other thing. Well, here's the other thing that kind of perturbs me. Um, Alex Shelley... EC3 and still to this point, um, Dion Parazzo, although she was offered a, a legit contract, are working without contracts. That's two of your four champions, technically three of your five, if you want to count the TNA title and, and however you want to delineate who is and isn't the champion. Um, they're not working without contracts right now. Like, they're working without contracts right now. And I don't understand why that is a willing thing for them to continue to do like that. That Uh seems like a stupid idea. Yeah. Now I think with guys like EC three and Shelly, I think you can sit there and go, Oh yeah. You know, they're a veteran. They're not going to burn their bridges. They know impact is, you know, either number two or number three in terms of biggest North American paydays. You're not going to fuck with that bridge. Right. Right. But, but on the, on the flip side, I don't understand why he can, you know, why this is a continued idea that is constantly implemented and put forth because of the simple fact that when it comes to wrestling, y- you can never really take stock or, or, or put a lot of faith in, in the guys without contracts because you don't know how long they're going to stay. You know, if you take the uh-huh. ball off of Shelly, is, is he going to be offended if you give it to the Good Brothers? Because maybe, and this is speculation, this is not something I'm reporting as a fact. But maybe there's like, maybe Shelly hates them, right? Maybe he can't stand Doc Allows, right? There's no evidence to support that. I'm just, I'm giving you a for instance. Shelly, for instance, maybe he hates someone in the locker room and maybe that person goes over and wins on them. Well, what if he gets mad? What if he hates that and, and decides like, fuck this, I'm gone? Well, now you look even sillier for putting your bullets on a guy who isn't committed long term. And now you look like the company that keeps basically doing the uh, all-star title handing where anytime you get a new uh, all-star signed on, you hand them a belt. Like, that's a bad reputation. And it's, I mean, for the most part, that's the reputation that they have. Yeah. As soon as they bring in someone, whether they're a former hand or someone that just got off the WWE, they either push them to the moon just right away for no real reason. Which, I mean, I get you don't want to bring in someone just to have them squander in the bottom necessarily, but you don't want to just immediately hand them titles either. And that seems to be kind of where Impact is suffering is you don't want them to feel like they're not being appreciated as talents, but I also feel like they overcompensate with their with their yes. booking. I, and, like, the thing is, like, before the pandemic, and this is probably an issue with specifically the pandemic, they were bringing in local guys. So, like, you could bolster your roster, you know, with 10 extra dudes for, you know, five grand, if that. So right. you, could, you could have them go out there and have some squash matches and have more kind of fresh matchups and, and maybe have, like, just for a for sake of instance, have, like, a guy like EC3 go over and Noah Furnham. It doesn't matter because Norv is there just to sell. So EC3 gets to do his greatest hits collection. Fans are like, yeah, I got to see EC3. That was awesome. You save him from having a big matchup, and then you can build to that matchup down the road. But without that kind of ability to go get 
lesser known talents and, and, and more affordable talents that circulate into the roster with every new taping, you're forced to have matches like last night where we got, um, where, where we got things like, uh, um, Diana versus Tennille in the main event only because like either they, they don't have that much depth or because they're truly unsure of how to promote guys up the roster or gals up the roster in, in this situation and have good main events without giving away the big matches because Jordan and Tennille is a big match in my opinion. And I feel like this has mm. become a recurring trend. And I think that's part of the reason why when you think of like Eric Young and, and Rich Swan, there's no real hype there. And I think partly is, is the rushing Swan. Like Swan isn't someone that I think has a lot of mic charisma. He, yeah. he, he kind of, he, he, to me, he's like Steve Blackman. And I know people are going are to be like, well, Blackman, it was notorious for not having charisma and and to that i'd say no blackman was very charismatic he just wasn't a great talker his there is a difference yes his moding his, his mooding his ability to present himself was a big thing for him and his character like you knew what he was about he didn't need to do the quippy catchy promos like al snow you knew what steve blackman was about because he was charismatic in how he presented himself Dan Severin didn't have any charisma, which is why there's a big gap difference between Steve Blackman and his fan base 20 odd years later and Dan Severin's as a wrestler. So I see Swan in that Dan, not, 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 in the uh, Steve Blackman role. Like he's very charismatic with the body movements. He really makes you believe what he's doing is what he's doing. There is no real denial with, you know, what he's about and, and, and how you can get the most out of him. It's, it's, it's very fluid, right? But when it comes to his promos, I don't find him to be all that engaging. He doesn't really have anything that I think is worth saying or listening to. It's not like with Willie Mack where he very much has that dusty charm, that every man, that blue collar kind of guy, you know, where, where Willie Mack is like, listen, man, I ain't the biggest, I ain't the fastest, but I'll whoop you. And like that really mm-hmm. resonates with a lot of people. But with Swan, like I feel like he's kind of a caricature at times. Like he always does like that big old evil eye that he does. And, like, he always kind of, like, saunters to the ring. And, like, his gimmick and look has never been that great. And, and like, all right, cool. I get it. You, you like sn- uh, uh, snowboarding. I get it. I was about to call it snakeboarding. But, but also, on the flip side, what does you wearing snow goggles to the ring do other than make me think that you're trying to be Brian Christopher and no one should ever want to have a career like Brian Christopher's? No, no disrespect intended, but when you're – when you're the grandmaster sexe of, of a tag team that maybe had one title ring, yeah. Like, strive to at least be the Genetti at that point. <laughs> so, I, I remember I, when they brought in Brian Christopher to the beginning of, like, at the very beginning of TNA. Yes. Yes, I do. I, I, rem- I remember they brought in Brian Christopher and tried to promote him as a top guy. It was so bad. It was. It was truly awful. So, and yet they're still doing that to this day. They, they are. When you look at guys like Brian Myers and Rich Swan and Eric Young, that's literally what they're doing. At least with Eric Young, there's historical significance with him and the brand. Yeah. But, all right, put him in the mid cards. Like, like, the thing is with Impact, they have the ability to do like a, a hardcore division that would be really, really cool. With guys like, you know, Triple XL, Sawyer Fulton, Eric Young, uh, Tommy Dreamer, Sammy Callahan, and I think there's a few others. Uh-huh. And they're not. And, and I'm kind of just like, why do you have all these brawlers if you're not going to have a division for them? And why do they always lose? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> right? Like, so, I don't know. Impact has perturbed me. Uh, so this was great. Heath Slater. I don't know who paid for these. Maybe it was Impact. Maybe it was Slater himself. They hired a bunch of cameos. Uh, these there were was, fun. These were, yes. Uh, I, when I first saw David Hasselhoff, I'm like, all right, no, that that, that tracks. <laughs> like, like they got uh, they got um, uh, 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 Scott Bayo. So like, all right, this tracks. And then it was like Flavor Flav, and, and then Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris and. Was it Michelle Kwan? No. Nancy it was Kerrigan? Um, Nancy Kerrigan. Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah. Right. 
And so I'm like, oh, and, then, and like the funny thing is, like, I'm seeing the cameo watermark, and I'm just like, you know, if this was any other segment and they're, and they're trying to hype up these celebrity appearances, I would be like, this is really bad. Like, this is, this makes impact look terrible. But then you realize that it's for Slater. Yeah. It's very much on brand. <laughs> yes. And the best part is, do you remember when Rhino, of all people, ran for, like, state congress of, De- of Michigan? I was about to say of Detroit. Yeah, I remember that. And, like, Kurt Angle showed up, and I'm just like, Pennsylvania, Michigan. They don't even touch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the cool thing uh, about this, this promo was like, I, I, I guarantee you Rhino had a hand in it because it very much was a political kind of like, you know, vote for Heath kind of thing. I thought that was great. I thought that was just <laughs> beautifully done. Like, mwah. just fantastic. Just fantastic. Oh, a Rhino in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like great it was, it was really good. Um, Alex Shelley said on Twitter, and I don't know if he was saying this, tongue in cheek or if he meant um like just strictly as a promo but alex shelley said uh, Heath slater is the one wrestler he will take time out of his day to watch the matches of or watch him wrestle i think is how he said it so there's clearly a uh a fan appreciation from within inside the locker room of heath slater and his gimmicks which mm-hmm. you know is actually kind of a good thing and, and and i'll get to why here in a second um uh, apparently, Impact.com is saying these these cameos and commercials were paid for by <laughs> Hernandez because of the money that they stole from him. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that too. I don't know if that was said on, on the broadcast, but like, I don't uh, believe it was, but I appreciate it. <laughs> like, they should have ended the commercial with uh, "This has been brought to you by Heath uh, People for Heath for Impact." Paid for by the, the kind, uh, kind and generous donations of Hernandez and the Hernandez Pocket Fund. Yeah, they, sh- they really should have. That would have been great. Uh, there's a commotion backstage. It's the Machine Guns, Good Brothers, Rascals. They're all arguing about who's going to get who. And the Rascals are like, we'll, we'll take you on in a match. And I'm sitting here going, didn't we already see this? Didn't we already see this? <laughs> No. All right. <laughs> did, did they did they wrestle the Good Brothers? I don't know. Everyone is rematching with everyone. Yeah, we uh, like we constantly get how deep their the, like tag team divisions are and the knockout divisions. But it's just like we keep getting the same shit over and over again. Well, the sad thing is, is some of the tag teams are splitting up. Some of the tag teams are facing off in singles matches, and, and that's just, I don't know. So then we get EC3. He's doing one of his bought and paid for advertisements, and he gave out Moose's phone number. <laughs> I did not call. <laughs> Cannot confirm. Uh, thoughts on this one? Um, very interesting. I kind of wanted to call just to see what would happen. <laughs> but I assume it's more of just a texting number and i'm sure it's not i mean i would have to assume that it's not an actual phone number for moose but something that they like a prepaid phone number that'd be my thought backstage we go taya asks rosemary why she didn't go out to ring side with her last week rosemary says it's because i have wedding stuff and taya goes well i'll help you and rosemary's like all right i'll help you with your stuff and you'll help me with mine taya's like flip that I'll help you first because I'm such a good friend. So I guess Ty and Rosemary are going to do a Bill and Ted-esque journey to the underworld to get James Mitchell. I'm on board. Should be, uh, should be interesting. Then we get Johnny Bravo talking to his groomsmen. It is Cody and Jake Diener, Johnny Swinger, Crazy Steve Falaba, and... Alicia? <laughs> She doesn't go on to say that she's a bridesmaid, but Johnny's having none of that. I think it was Johnny Swinger's like, well, you know, forget this wedding planning stuff. We need to plan for the bachelor party. You know, strippers. And, like, you could see Alicia, like, she kind of, like, pulls her fists up, like, around her chest and starts, like, 
like popping up and down like like she's changing she's like strip like she's clearly not into the idea but she's kind of going along with it <laughs> mm-hmm. I, th- I thought that was great um johnny bravo gets them on track though but the deaners have to take a leave of absence because they're gonna go deal with i guess eric young uh best part about this was johnny swinger said something to the effect uh, johnny bravo said something to the effect like uh um, I got you guys into Wrestle House, and without me, you wouldn't be relevant. <laughs> and I kind of just remembered thinking to myself, "Damn, when did Johnny Bravo get balls?" Right. That that was an, and, that was impressive. And then Dreamer pops up and goes, "Match time! Not now, Dreamer. <laughs> this is Wrestle House." So that was great. It goes on though to the next segment where Brian Myers is flipping tables backstage. He, he's having a bad day. He's still upset because he lost last week. And frankly, they've had that match so many times. I thought he won last week. Yeah. So, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. No, so, so, it's one of those things where, like, yeah, here we are. Uh, Gia accused him of cheating and two victories over Willie Mack and Tommy walks up and tells Willie, uh, not Willie, uh, Brian to clean up the mess. And Meyer's like, listen, you are the same age. When you hired me, I, you know, God damn it. How, how did he say this? Brian Myers is currently I'm- the same age that Tommy Dreamer was when Tommy Dreamer first hired Brian Myers into the WWE back in the mid-2000s. And he made a a point of emphasis to say, I am not a young boy anymore. I am not a rookie. I'm not wet behind the ears. You can't talk to me like this. I wouldn't even let my own father talk to me like this. And Dreamer says, you know, if I was your father, I'd smack the taste out of your mouth. And Brian says, if you were my father, I would have smacked the taste out of your mouth or something like that. But then Brian Myers eventually relents and says, fine. I'll pick this up. But the next time you see me, Dreamer, walk away. And I'm kind of like, um, was that a good segment? (laughs) No, not really. I like Dreamer more than I ever thought possible. Mm -hmm. I really want to see more of him even though I know his body kind of looks like um, popsicle sticks and glue at this point. Like one fall and it's going to shatter. Yeah. But on the flip side, Dreamer does bring a lot of nuance, a lot of notoriety and a lot of uh, nobility to his role and impact. And he's trustworthy. Mm. I know it's crazy to sit here and say, put the world title on Dreamer. It's a better option than Eric Young or Swan at this point. But yeah. I would not mind them bringing back the Legends title. I pitched a long time ago. Have the Legends title be a 40 and up belt and put it on um, uh, older guys who can draw some name value. Shamrock, uh-huh. Dreamer, Rob Van Dam, Rhino, just to name a few. So, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where I think, you know, Dreamer still has some some selling points. And, and clearly, because they put him on a feature marquee match for Slammiversary, Last few Slammiversaries, if I remember correctly. Because he faced off yeah. with... Uh, who did he face off with today? Not today, this year. Um, was it Moose? Yes, it was Moose. And then last year, I want to say it was... Eddie? That sounds right. And then before it was that, either I, I want to say... Eddie or a tag team with it. Yeah, I want to say the tag team was 2017. All right, I Googled it. Slammiversary 17. Load faster, asshole. Load faster. Boy. Zach, can you go and do it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why my internet is doing this. Slammiversary 2017. Oh, look, El Patron. Mmm, <laughs> let's, let's forget that. Sure. All right. Uh, 
Where is Dreamer? Dreamer is not in this on this card. Maybe it was bound for glory 2017. Maybe. Because I remember see. I remember it was Moose Dreamer and Eddie versus Sammy Callahan and OVE. Oh, that, oh was... that that may have been that may have been in 27, uh, 2018 in April. Hmm. Right, I'm looking it up on my phone. Fuck this internet connection bullshit. My <laughs> Ever since I got the new computer back in December, I've uh, I've been having issues like every so often with the internet, where I have to mm-hmm. disconnect and reconnect to the internet. And I do not know why. All right, so let's see. 2019. Yeah, 20, Slammiversary 2018, Eddie, Eddie Face Dreamer. Okay. And a hardcore match. Uh, Dreamer wasn't on the 2019 card. So then we go to 2018. And you said this is the year where he faced Eddie at Slammiversary? Yeah, 2018. Uh, so that means, yeah, here we go. Uh, redemption of that year. That's where the, the six-man tag happened. It was Moose, Dreamer, and Edwards versus OVE. In a House of Hardcore match. I saw Ali was world champion, uh, knockouts champion for a second, and I was like, when did Alicia win the knockouts title? <laughs> uh, my bad. Uh, so let, let's just look at Bound for Glory. Uh, let's see. 2017, I don't see Dreamer on the card. Let's go to 2018. Uh, 2018, Eddie Edwards and Tommy Dreamer, Dreamer defeated Moose and Killer Cross. At Bound for Glory? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah look at that. And then 2019, I want to say Dreamer was in the Battle Royal. 2019. Where is yep. Dreamer? Yep, it was in the Battle Royal. Ah. Thank you, phone, for doing the job of my computer. So, when it comes to this situation with uh, with Tommy, you know, it's not that surprising they're they're using him again to build up for Bound for Glory. That may be a match for turning point which we'll get to here in a second but you know either way i don't know what the end game is because myers is not someone that i am very high on and even if they give him a gimmick that i think is interesting you know you 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 still have to deal with the fact that he doesn't have a lot of natural charisma other than you know pomp and and arrogance i Uh don't find him to be a great actor he's not he's not a great thespian so we move on to the Deaners versus Eric Young, I guess, is what it was supposed to be. I don't know. Uh, well, they were came up for a match, and then Eric Young just attacked them. We never really found out what their match was supposed to be. Uh, breaking news, it was the Deaners versus the Invisible Men. Hmm, missed out on that one. Ah. Young beats up uh, Cody and Jake, but focuses mainly on Cody. Jake comes back. They, they dub him, uh, what was it? Um, Filth style or, or, or filth strong, something like that. Big filthy. Big nasty. Big nasty. That's what it was. Big nasty. Yeah. And Josh has been calling that for months. I only first, I only just started to hear it. <laughs> like that, that could actually be a great gimmick idea if you figure out a way of packaging him correctly. Mm-hmm. So he, he starts going in on Eric Young. It looks to be a good little back and forth, but Eric Young again takes advantage and starts beating the hell out of them. Then Scott DeMore comes down. He's like, Eric, stop that. Eric's like, no, I don't want to. Scott's like, y- y- no, you got to. We, we, we Team Canada. And Eric Young's like, this is your fault. And Scott's like, we got to write the script better because I'm lost. <laughs> and then as uh, I think he was about to beat up DeMore next, uh, Eddie Edwards comes out, makes his return after two or three weeks off, and gets in the face of... Uh, of Eric Young, uh, we go to commercial. We come back. Uh, Scott's, you know, drinking some water, and he tells Eddie, you know, you got him in a rematch at Victory Road in the main events. It's going to be the first 
uh, Impact Plus event since uh, the pandemic started. It might be the first Impact Plus of the year. Hmm. I can't remember if there was one beforehand. I don't think there was. Um, I don't so, think there was either. Because I think, I think the stuff... There may have been one in January, I think. But I, I, I don't remember. And I would look it up, but... You know. <laughs> Issues. So, I would imagine that the Brian Myers, Tommy Dreamer match will happen here. I would imagine that um, the X Division 4-way that I think they're building up to will happen here. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if um, the tag team match between um, the Rascals and the Good Brothers happens here as well, or at least some kind of multi-tag team team, multi-tag team match that will get us from Victory Road to Bound for Glory. Yeah. I would love it if, if Eddie got the belt back, but I think this is a tease. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And I, I just kind of you know think to myself that this is a, a situation where if they don't make the change now, then Bound for Glory could be a very poorly received card. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Are you excited for the Impact Plus event? Well, I don't know that I am, honestly. It, I mean, it could be good, but I, just based on how the show, how this show ended, I'm not, not too thrilled about it. I don't have high hopes. Should say. High hopes. Zach doesn't have high hopes. He doesn't have pies in the skies and the thighs in the nights. I lost the lyrics. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to make them up. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Uh, we then get the dumbest match ever. If Rob Van Dam wins, Katie Forbes gets five minutes with Sammy Callahan. Do what? <laughs> Did someone book that incorrectly? Right? <laughs> usually it's, it's the heel being forced in to get five minutes with the wrestler. Now, this uh-huh. is the inverse, and it's dumb. Rob Van Dam wins with hairspray to the eyes. Yep. And then she gets in the ring with Callahan, and it goes exactly how you think it's going to go. He beats up RVD, then pile drives Katie Forbes, and, and, and uh, you know, just... It, that's it. Like, And it took, like, 25 minutes. It was such a long segment for something so short to get to. Yeah, I... <laughs> The the booking of this doesn't make any sense, and if I'm Callahan at this point, I just lay down and let RVD pin me so I can pile drive Katie Forbes. Right. Then and at, sense. and after after he does that, Josh Matthews says, "Well, that's a fitting way to cap off this feud." It's like, oh, it's done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not too upset about it, but that's that's all you got. Rob Van Dam's another name who is working without a contract. So, I don't know. Maybe this is the end of Rob's run in the company. He was just uh, quoted as saying that he doesn't have a passion for wrestling anymore. And what he's doing is just collecting a paycheck. Um, I don't see that as, like, the biggest kind of insult, though. You know what I mean? Like... It's one thing for Booker to show up in TNA in 2007 and just phone in every performance with him doing terrible accents. I think Rob Van Dam is saying that if the money's not right, he's not going to take a discount just to show up to work for Impact. He doesn't care about wrestling in the same way he used to because he used to work for ECW for next to nothing. There were months he wouldn't get paid because he had a passion for what he was doing. But now he's, he's trying to make money. I don't think his performances have suffered because of that mentality. His performances have suffered, but he's 50. And he's wrestled a high-impact style his entire career. He's suffered a lot of head... I got the hiccups now, goddammit. He's got a lot of head trauma. Uh So, 
I don't see this as the same situation. I don't. So for me, I'm of the mindset where I think to myself, this is exactly what I expect out of Rob Van Dam in terms of quality, whether he loved wrestling yeah. still or not. I would say this is still about what I expect out of him. So uh-huh. I, I don't uh-huh. feel like he's taken, t- you know, taken it easy, so, so to speak. Uh, we move on to Ace Austin and Madman Fulton claiming to be the number one contenders. The North says, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and this leads to a match that we'll get, I guess, next week? Yeah, I guess so. Or maybe at Victory Road? Sh- Victory Shroud? Habra, 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 habra. I don't know why, but that made me think of, of uh, Tasmania. Down in Tasmania, down in Tasmania, down in Tasmania. We mean you. Uh, so the main event was the main event. It was okay. A solid okay from a match that we've seen before. It's a solid, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, sure. It was match. <laughs> Things did occur. People were slammed. <laughs> Bodies <laughs> were mildly discomforted. Ring gear was partially torn. I'm trying to think of the uh, the WWE. Uh, uh, I, I tore my uh, knee in six different locations. I, I broke my neck in 14 places. I had a, a hemorrhaging <laughs> brain disease when I fell off the ladder. Like... I could I can't remember what they actually were, but like that's what I'm trying to like, you know, like bodies were broken. <laughs> so I'm like bodies were slightly bruised, <laughs> were mildly discomforted. <laughs> so so many of those different, so many different ones. Like every time a wrestler had a major injury, they would add that to the list. It's just like oh, okay, it got to a point where Ray the two- Batista in here, he's got some. It gets yeah, Batista Ray, like just stacking them up, stacking them up, stacking them up. It got to a point where the, where the things would be so long, the two hour raw, raws would be 10 minutes long. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Uh, welcome to Monday Night Raw. In the ring is Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels kicks him in. We're out of time. We gotta go. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> right. So, um, I forget how I think Caleb distracted Jordan. That's how they got the win. Yes. Well, at least to Neil then just do a roll up. She actually like spun grace around and hit her with her, with like a, I miss such like clay market. <laughs> okay. I was about to say, I missed the actual final sequence. I had looked away. Um, so I missed like the last 30 seconds of the match. So it's a clay more kick. That's what, that's what it is essentially. Cause they yeah, call it the spotlight it, it, kick. Yeah, it's it's a claymore kick, but to the side of the head while the opponent is like double over, essentially. Doubled over. Doubled over, I say. Double overlay. Uh huh. Double overlay. So <clears throat> that takes us to the final segment. Eddie is leaving the building, and he is attacked by a blackout. Damn rolling blackouts. Things. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what exactly happened here. Like, Eddie's on the ground. They're like, uh, like I don't even remember if there's any commentary. So No, I don't think there was at that point. Because it was it was like the like after the wrap up kind of a deal. Mm-hmm. So wait so yeah, we have and we didn't like we just heard like the Camera went out. There's just a whole bunch of grunting, and then Eddie's on the floor. Eddie's withering, going. <laughs> what's up, Doc? Uh, what's up, Doc? How was that? Was that was that all right? Be honest. It's all right. No. Okay. <laughs> eh. What's up, Doc? I I got the eh. Like I I hit the right notes for the eh. I can hear that. But I, I didn't keep it at the same pitch for the what's up, Doc. Yep, yep, yep. My, my throat's all scratchy now. Now it's like, oh, you, oh, you, you want to try doing shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. Uh, I don't know who this is going to be. 
Uh, Bound for Glory says, rumors say, Ken Shamrock, Eddie. Why would Eddie get attacked by Ken Shamrock? Why would Shamrock do it that way? Why would someone throw a blackout effect at Eddie Edwards to knock him down? Like, in my head, someone takes the camera, puts the cap on it, and throws it at Eddie, and then puts it back up. <laughs> That's what's going through oh. my head. Like, okay. All right. It is what it is. So, it's very much a, uh, a mystery. The whodunit. The... Uh, the do, 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 do. The truth is out there. If it's Ken Shamrock, I'm perplexed. Like, there's one way to go with it, but it doesn't make any sense, and that's the whole Ken wants to bring the real Eddie back. But otherwise, like, what? Like, there's one that I'd be fine with, and, and maybe I'm the only one, but it's, it's like the feud of the last five years for Impact. And uh-huh. that would be Sammy and Eddie. If for whatever reason Sammy decides he's done, not done fucking with Eddie yet, <laughs> I'd be fine with that. Those two have great chemistry together. They do. But, but like, if it's Shamrock, like the the way it happened makes so little sense. And I'm just sitting here going, like, what? If it's Davey yeah. Richards, okay, I'm on. Like, whatever. Like, you could have had Davey come sure. back in a, in a two-two and a tricycle, and, and he throwing candy corn at Eddie, which is a hate crime, by the way, because I hate candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> like, that would have been fine, too. Like, just bring back David Richards. I don't give a fuck if Ethan Page doesn't like him. <laughs> oh, God. Speaking of things I hate, you remember I told you I, I used to play EWR all the time, that, that booking game? That yeah. Wrestling- well, I bought the, the 2018, 2017 versions, like TWF or whatever, and it's so bad. I haven't touched it in, like, eight months. And, like, every time I think of wrestling, I'm like, oh, that'd be a cool thing to book out and see how it would work. And I'm just like, ugh, never mind. <laughs> I don't even care. It's such a god-awful program. <laughs> I might just start doing fantasy bookings again on the website. <laughs> uh, that way I can get my creative juices flowing. I think that's why I play with action figures so much as a kid. I like telling stories. Mm-hmm. I had a really cool one about Sting winning every title ever. <laughs> he was the best around. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> it doesn't. I love that one. And I, I had like the, uh, the good WCW action figures, not the terrible like post-93 WWE like fucking troglodyte ones were like, Remember, remember the old uh, like nineteen eighties uh, like blocky action figures that the WWE had. WCW ended up having something very similar, and they were awful. But then in like ninety eight, they hooked up with Toy Biz, and like, do you ever think about I don't know, proportioned bodies and movable joints? And, and WCW was blown the fuck away. They're like, what? <laughs> That's possible. So. I, uh, I, I had, like, a bunch of those. I got those for, like... You, you there, Zach? We, uh, we're, we're having some, uh, some difficulties on Zach's end. He was uh, a little, little on the side of things. Zachy. Nope. You sound like a Tron robot. Would you? Nope. Would you like to play a game? Zach, I'm going to call you back. See if that works. Zach, are you done fudging around? Zach? Let's see. Zach? Well, we're, we're, nope. I can I can see you flashing. Let's see. Uh, let's see if this works. We're gonna restart the entire call. All right, Zach. Can you hear me now? I hear nothing. I see nothing. Forsooth, Dowzaki boy. 
Zacky boy, the Zack, the Zack is piping on. We're going to switch things over to the good old fashioned Skype Rooney. See if that doesn't help. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it was my internet that was causing the issue. But we don't need to tell Zach that that's a possibility. Zach's not even online yet. Uh, maybe we'll go back to Discord. We're, we're wasting show time there, Zach. This is going to make for great entertainment. Great edutainment. Any day now, Zach. Let's see. Let's see if one of these works. Zach? Nope. Go to Skype. I'm going to call you from Skype. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to end the show. <laughs> like, we're already near the end of it anyway. At this point, I'm just looking to do the outro. Uh, why, is he, why is he not going to Skype? That says he's active now. Will this, will this be the fateful try? Zach, it's... I, I, it says I just you're, took, it, it just took that long to get Skype open. It says you're unavailable. <laughs> does it say I'm unavailable? It does. But I can hear you. Well, maybe maybe it's saying romantically. <laughs> <laughs> Zach is romantically unavailable. Well, okay, fair. <laughs> so, yeah, I was talking about action figures, and you're trying to, uh, trying, trying to comment and I don't know what you said so what'd you say Zach what'd you say I I was just saying that I always questioned as the the thought process of action figures with no movable joints it's like it's like someone didn't want kids to be happy right why would you do that to children like at least with the WWE ones in the late 90s, like the 98, 99, like they had the, the rubber mold ones, which were all right. But then you had like yeah. the solid plastic ones and they didn't have any joint movements. Like they had joint movements, but they didn't have like elbow or knee movements in most of them. But like you could still uh -huh. use them, right? You're right. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of 90s action figures didn't have elbow or knee movement. It was just the full arm and full leg for whatever reason. I will say this. My favorite two to use, just because of how they, they were both designed, was the first Goldberg WCW one with the jackhammer motion. And mm. there was this awful-looking Billy Gunn rubber action figure that his knees were, like, in the perfect positioning, so, like, you could do, like, all the suplexes with him, and it would look cool as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I was, doing ti I was doing tiger drivers. I was doing fucking overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplexes, you know, goddamn uh, jackhammers. Like, like, yeah, fuck yeah. I don't know why I got on this topic, but yeah, here we are. I need to book things. I need to write. I'm writing too many newsy things. I, I, need, to, I need to write some more creative things to offset the newsiness. Mm -hmm. I'll be writing many newsies tonight, so. Oh. Yes. I'm going to pack up and, and, and have tomorrow loaded up strong with at least nine different posts, I think. Not, not on the website, but on my other my, my work jobs. My work jobs. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> Your that, work jobs. Them words, people. Things the talk of, of my mouth. Oi, 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 oi. It's magic. So, Zacky Poo, Zacky Poo, Zacky Poo. I don't know if those were words. <laughs> um, well, uh, so, yeah, anything else you want to comment on? Before we uh, 22 skidoo the night away? No, I think I'm good. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to start uh, re-watching the Legion of Superhero show tonight. To get, uh, you don't have fresher. a game to cover tomorrow? No, I don't. At least not, not that oh, I'm aware fantastic. of. Fantastic. 
I mean, you never know. I might. I might. Yeah, that was a, a Browns game, and I don't think we have any more Thursday night games. So, so here we are. We're ready to go. Zach, realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com. We're on Instagram at uh, Real Nerd Corp. We're on Twitter at Nerd Corp, N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P, N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. We're also on... Um, we're also on shit. What else is there? YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, all those are on the website. Just go to the website, realnerdcorp.com, R E A L N E R D C O R P.com. Zach and I and Marcus will be back tomorrow to talk Legion of Superheroes, the WB animated cartoon. Yes, seriously, this time we're doing it. Uh, the replay will be up on Comic and Game Core's Twitch site and Comic and Game Core's YouTube site and on the website, realnerdcorp.com as well. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Let us know if you are okay with the Rich Swan Eric Young main event if you want. We might respond to your comments on air. But for Zachary Tyler, PP Duncan, which you can find over on uh, Instagram and on DeviantArt at Radiance2020, R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E-2020, as well as me over on Twitter at Chad Nerdcore.